Okay, everybody. So good evening. It is July 29th and I'm going to show uh, the agenda today. I'm just going to show, we're going to go over uh, the assignment due this evening that we talked about last week, the Joe Gebbia lecture. Uh, and then I'm going to show you these next two assignments for Wednesday and for Friday. One is a listening assignment. I think that is usually where uh, people struggle the most. I'm going to show you uh, a trick to help with these co more complicated listening assignments. So here we go. All right. So last week I gave this writing assignment, a short work speech, a worksheet based on the Joe Gebbia speech. That was inspired by this assignment, uh, Barcelona's ban on short-term rentals. So for this one, it was a listening, and a lot of people really, really struggled with the listening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the assignment here where people seem to struggle the most with and offer some advice. So when you are opening up this page right here, you can use your hand raising emoji. Tell me... Um, where do you think you should begin? Anybody. And once again, if you're watching this recording, I'm having an issue with my camera, so I'm not forcing anybody to turn on their camera. But where do you think might be a good place to begin? Wesley, and go for it. You begin for within the instruction, um, quick start. There you go. So we got the title. Okay, we got the source of it and just click start. You could do that. Anybody else? There's a couple of things you could do. So I'm hovering my mouse over this right here. The source of this story right there, take a look at it. It's, if you click on the source, it will actually take you to an Associated Press story. And it gives you a lot more, it's current events. It gives you a lot of uh, details. So when you click left click here, your InGen account automatically gives you access to various news organizations. It's pretty cool, right? Has anybody ever, ever done that? Just decide to let left click on the source. But that can be a little bit distracting. Anything else you might want to do besides click on the left, click on the source? I want to direct your attention down here. What are these two icons? First one on the left says summary. Second one says words. Who could tell me what is a summary? Resume. Um, not a resume, not a resume. A summary, it's a short um, explanation of what it's about. So watch this, I'm gonna left click down here on summary and it's got an eyeball icon. And it's just one sentence. Who could read this sentence for me? Uh, let's hear from Elise. Would you like to read the sentence down here on in the bottom? Barcelona City Council wants to tackle the city's housing crisis. Very good. Excellent. So what this is doing is if I just click on the summary, it's only one sentence. And if I'm looking at a brand new topic, it's going to clue me into something. Now, let's say I don't know where the city of Barcelona is. Maybe I don't know what tackle means. Maybe I don't get housing crisis, but I can kind of figure something out. Maybe I know city council means government. Okay. So the, there's a city and they have a government and they're making a new policy. Or maybe I, I only understand 50% of this. I'll, I'll still have a better chance of understanding it. So 
my advice is with these tougher listening assignments, click on the summary first. It's kind of like when you're uh, reading a book and the book will give you an introduction before the first chapter. It's often helpful to read the introduction and then go into the chapter because you'll, you'll be able to just have a frame of reference for the story. So like uh, most of you are in class this time last week. If, uh, if you have a frame of reference, great. If you don't, click the summary and it will clue you into what's going on. Now take a look at words. Oh my goodness. So many new words. This will definitely help. So let's begin by doing a little pronunciation, everybody's favorite. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to underline a word and please repeat after me. Here we go. Acute. Acute. I heard Wesley and everybody. Let's do it together. Acute. 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 Bit. Bit. Very good. Convert. 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 City council. I'm sorry. Council data. Council data. Housing crisis. Housing crisis. Very good. Now, if I just take one, two, three, four, five words, and then I click, I get this neat little trick right here. I not only get the definition, very serious or severe, and then it gives me the keyword in context. So the keyword is in a bid to address the city's acute housing crisis. And then if you don't have me to guide you, you can just click here. Acute. 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 Isn't that cool? Let's try the next one. Bid. Who can read for me the def uh, the um, definition of bid? Attempt or for. Correct. Correct. And uh, I, uh, Amaya, you can. Go, uh, go for the next one. You had your hand up. So uh, the word bid is oftentimes used in the construction uh, field. So contractors want to make a bid, a project proposal of some sort. So in context, in a bid to address the city's acute housing crisis, in a bid to address the city's acute housing crisis. And the next word, council data. What in the world does that mean? So, uh, Amaya, you want to explain for us this definition here? I can read. Go for it. Okay. Or, I'll, I'll make it a little bigger. I know it's a little small. Okay. There we you. go. Make it bigger for you here. There we go. Whoop. That's actually so big, it's off the page. Okay, there we go. Council data. Okay, uh, council data information collect and maintained by the government of a particular area, town, or city. Very good. So it's, it's information kept by some geographic location, the particular town or city. Very good. Uh, next up housing crisis so there's a housing crisis housing crisis housing crisis and you can click there get that pronunciation so uh who wants to read the definition of a housing crisis oh i got two uh sandy go for it okay i can see it this one sure okay i got it. so oh, oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry hold on a second there it is yep uh, is the problem in Sociedad where they are enough good a borderline uh, place to live? Very good. Problem in society where there aren't enough good, affordable places to live. That, that sounds like a lot of places in the world. Housing crisis. Now, if we look at the definition of housing crisis, where would 
this come into play? Short term rentals, because that's what we that was the that's what we discussed last week. That's what the uh, short writing assignment was all about. How does how does short term rentals affect a housing crisis? Uh, Wesley, I think you have your hand up. Because the short term, uh, the short term rentals, uh, nobody wanna sell the house. Most mm. of the people wanna rent home. Hmm. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe. Does do short term rentals make? In what way do they affect a housing crisis? Does it make it? Easier to find a place to live or harder to find a place to live? Arguably. So hard. I think it's hard. I think that was Sandy and Wesley. And tell us why it part a short-term rent short-term rentals might make it harder to find places to live. Because impact impact uh, the the leaf on the all the industry uh, hotels and all the, the the rental in in the area area. Well, they certainly do give competition to hotels, but how would short term rentals affect a housing crisis? For instance, I'll, I'll give an example. Let's say, um, let's say Amaya has an apartment and Alejandro would like to rent one room in that apartment. Uh, Amaya, you can, uh, Alejandro, uh, give me a price. How much are you willing to pay Amaya to rent that room in her apartment for a one month? Give me like a like 1,900, I don't know. A room? Yeah, 900, 1,000. I didn't say the whole apartment, I said just the room, one room. With 800? I mean, they could be a great room. I mean, maybe it's in the great part of the city, but okay, so there we go. So so let's say Alejandro is willing to pay Amaya um, 800 per month for that one room in her apartment. Okay, so Maya, you got an offer. Now, you could rent it out to Alejandro. He's a nice guy. He cleans up. He pays his rent on time. Why not? Or you realize that a lot of people want to visit Boston, and you could list it on Airbnb or some other short-term rental site for how much do you think you could get your room per night on Airbnb? Like 300. Really? Okay. You must be per in the middle of the town. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, you must really like be in the middle of yeah, it's only, it's only one country is like a $20. $20. Or? $20. The most high. Well, $20, that means you're probably in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. Uh, but For night. <laughs> For nine in the in my country, okay, yeah. it in can the be capital. 500, 500. Anyway, no, you could you could do 300 a night, but it's got to be like where everybody really wants to be. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like right now, people want to be in Paris for the Olympics. You could probably charge a high price for one room in the middle of Paris. So let's say you think you could do 300 a night where you live? Yeah. <laughs> You really okay? All right. Let's just say <laughs> you must live in like Beacon Hill. Okay. Three hundred per. This is this is definitely an exaggeration. Like three hundred night, you, you must be living like in a really great place. But anyway, <laughs> so Amaya, which one would you rather do? Would you like to rent your room to? Strangers for 300 per night or rent it for 800 a month to Alejandro. What would you rather do? 
I think 300 per night because yeah, it's I would too. more profitable for me. Yeah, that's really like, that's an easy choice. Even if you get, but well, what if you get some crazy people come in the apartment once in a while? What if you get Wesleyan coming in and he like wants to throw wild parties and run around naked? Can you handle that? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, so, yeah, so you can take night. it. You, you can take the weirdos coming by once in a while. Okay. <laughs> and, all right. So sorry, Alejandro. You gotta. You're gonna have to work harder to find a place to live. Um. <laughs> So I'm going to ask the same question. How do short-term rentals affect the housing crisis in a big city? Who wants to answer now? Because people prefer short-term rental. Well, um, if, you have a, if you have property to rent, yes, you, you you, have the property. it's more profitable. If, if yeah. Yeah. Not in place. It's, it's different everywhere. Like you're not going to, if you live like an hour outside of the city, maybe not. But if you're really in the big city where everybody wants to travel to, yes, it's much more profitable to get your place uh, rented out short term and have a steady tenant. Certainly. So that's why the city of Barcelona has taken this, these extreme measures. Barcelona is not the only city in the world. Uh, several American cities, New York, Miami Beach, have taken uh, similar actions against short-term rentals. But it's hard to police because, uh, you know, the Internet is the Internet. People want what they want. It's not that hard to just show up in a place and say you're somebody's friend and stay there two nights. But uh, governments do try to regulate this thing, and that's what... Uh, the story is about. Um, so he, here we go. We, let's look at the rest of the vocabulary. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to underline a word and I'm going to ask who can give me their own definition of the word. Impact. Who can define the word impact? impact to have an effect or to influence here's an easy one landlords what's a landlord pinar go for it uh, owner of the house perfect people who own apartments or houses other people to pay to live in very good Okay, next one, licenses. And this is actually specific to the story. Barcelona City Council has announced plans to scrap 10,000 tourist flat licenses. So in this particular city, uh, to rent out your apartments to tourists, you have to have a particular license to do so. Uh, Maine and New Hampshire have uh, similar rules. They have things called condo tells, um, particular real estate laws. Anyway, uh, major, how does that come, how is that put into context? Big or important is, is the definition and how it's used in context in tackling the local problem that's fell in all of Europe's major tourist destinations. So that's how the word major is put in context. All of Europe's major tourist destinations. Oh, Pinar, quick question. Um, is it easy to find a good Airbnb in Istanbul right now? Uh, yeah, I think so, because everybody wants to rent their flats mm -hmm. to Airbnb because the tourists pay more than Turkish people. Yeah. So that's why the landlord prefer, but the renters doesn't want. Oh, so it's a similar prefer. issue. So lo local people don't like it, but yeah. landlords do like it because they can make more money. Yeah. The same problem. Same problem, yeah. 
And in a way, it's uh, oftentimes it's not just landlords, it's the renters themselves. So if your name is on a lease, <clears throat> you might, like I gave the analogy, I said, um, who was it? I think it, I said, uh, uh, Amaya, should Amaya rent one room in her apartment to Alejandro or put it on Airbnb? And she definitely would make more money on Airbnb. Um, so it's not just uh, landlords. Often it is the, the tenants themselves subleasing it. And sometimes sometimes the the person on the lease who is a renter can make more money from one room than the landlord is making from the whole apartment. So it gets a little bit complicated. Uh, mayor, who could give me a definition of the word mayor? Uh, Sandy, I see your hand up. Yeah, mm -hmm. the mayor, be or important. Oh, that's major, uh, mayor. Okay. Read that. Uh, okay. Person who is the head or leader, the government of the city. Very good. So word in context, the city's mayor described the move as a turning point, turning point, like a paradigm shift, a, a, a watershed moment. I'm using a lot of colloquial phrases here, but a, a, a time of change, a turning point. Here's the word move in context. The city's mayor described the move as a turning point. Same sentence. Okay, negatively. Definition in a bad way. Next up, properties. And this could be anything, homes, buildings, pieces of land. Um, here's a good word. Who can tell me what is a proponent? P R O, proponent. Proponent. Um, oh, I see. I see something in the chat. Oh, no worries. You know what, Pedro? I'm actually having an issue with my camera. I mentioned to the um, uh, to the class right now. I'm hoping to get it solved later. So uh, I'm I'm also just my profile picture this evening. But I tried to put a nice pro, uh, profile picture, so I'm not giving you just a black square. Anyway. Um, let's see. Proponent. Oops. Anybody want to guess the definition of a proponent? Yeah, I got one. Sure, go for it, Sandy. So it's a person who advocates uh, or te theory, proposal, or project. Very good. Very good. All right. That's pretty good. Let's see what we have here. People who support something or persuade others to do something. Pro, I'm in favor of. People often, this is a good way to talk about your um, political opinions, your um, consumer habits, uh, whatever it is. I'm pro this thing. Let's see. So here it is, proponents of Airbnb and other short-term tourist rental platforms. Okay, here's a good word, radical. Who can give me the definition of radical? Uh, Wesleyan, take it away. One is something, it's a strain. Yeah, strange. Strange is one. Uh, it's a um, a strong, like a too strong, too weak. Mm. Think of the opposite of traditional. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which could be strange, but uh, it's very strange. Yeah. yeah, extreme or relating to big or great change. It, when people yeah, say this is radical, it means it's it's out of the ordinary. It's not what one would expect. This is a radical change. Um, rental platforms. Uh, I'll just click on that one. There it is. Websites or apps where people can find and book place places to rent like homes or apartments. Uh, risen. 
increased or gone up. And in context, the price of renting in the Catalan capital has risen by 68% in 10 years. That's, that's quite a big jump for 10 years. They've risen just about everywhere, but that's a lot. Uh, scrap. It could be the verb to scrap, or it could be the noun like scraps of paper, scraps of metal in a junkyard. How is it used in this context, the word scrap? And in this case, it's the verb to continue with the system, not continue with the system or plan. <clears throat> Barcelona City Council has announced plan to scrap 10,000 tourist flat licenses. Now here's, uh, here's another, I'm gonna give you another analogy. Um, Amaya, are you okay if I use you again in this uh, hypothetical situation? Yeah, it's okay. Teach. All right, so Amaya, you make so much money off of uh, renting out your one-room apartment on Airbnb, you put some of that money in the bank, and then you decide, you know what, you're going to go into business. You are going to buy your own home. Uh, apartment a sec and you you are going to not live in it but you're only going to use it for short-term rentals you're making an investment in your own future you do very well and you buy another one and then you buy another one and all of a sudden amaya's got one apartment on airbnb another apartment on airbnb another apartment on Airbnb and you think you, you, you really got the hang of this. You even buy a fourth one. You think, you know what? Now this is my full-time job. I manage what these people want. I got some people working for me, you know, replacing the soap and the toothbrushes. I got a cleaner who goes in every day. And so now managing these four apartments every day, this is a full-time job for you. Uh, what do you think? You like it, Amaya? Yeah, I like it. That can be a good idea for my future. Yeah, actually. yeah, it sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> now, yeah. um, Pedro uh, is elected the mayor of the city. Pedro, do you think you can handle being the mayor of the city? Mark said, oh, wait, realize his baby's sleeping. Uh, hold on a second. Pinar, you're going to be mayor. Okay, Pedro says he thinks so. Um <laughs> Pinar, you're going. Uh, mm -hmm. Since Pedro has to have his microphone off, uh, Pinar, you're going to be mayor of the city. Pedro will be your um, your chief, your your um, your assistant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pedro and Pinar okay. working together, and Pinar has is notices that all the people that voted for you to put you in office, they can't find a place to live because all the apartments are short term rentals. So Pinar and Pedro have a plan and they are going to do this. They're going to scrap all these tourist flat licenses. And that will make it easier for somebody like Alejandro to find an apartment. What do you think about that, Amaya? Mm, say again, teacher, please. <laughs> What's that going to do to your business, Amaya? In my business. Yeah, you, you these are you you're making money doing short-term rentals. You got four apartments. I did it. Just in and out all day. You make thousands of dollars a month. Now you got to find long-term rental renters. Alejandro applies for one of your apartments. He's only willing to pay, oh, I don't know, 1600 a month. Usually you make about 9,000 a month from one of these things, and you, you're only going to make a fraction of that. What do you think about what's this going to do to your business, Amaya? If he came to me and asked me about an apartment. Well, if the city makes it harder for owners to rent out short term, who's not happy?
I didn't get that question, Pidge. So who is winning and who is losing? Right. Okay. Pedro got it. Pedro got it. So owners. The owner. So Maya, if you haven't made investments in short owning a short-term rental property, all of a sudden the local government has killed your business. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. With that so, so this is what this is what is happening in uh, Barcelona and other cities. It's easier for so here, here's the winner and here's the loser. The winner is Alejandro. Because now Alejandro can find an affordable apartment. But the loser is Amaya because now she can't rent out all four of her apartments to tourists and make a lot more money. So all of Amaya's money every month is disappeared because now they've made it harder. The government, the local government has made it harder to rent out short term. So this is where the debate comes in for short term rentals. Ordinary people who want a regular apartment to find a place to live in the city, they're the winners. But investors in travel and tourism who want to make money from short term rentals are not happy about this at all because they like the system the way it is. So that's where the debate comes in in major cities. Um, there it is. So when we when you go through, so yes, so 40 minutes into class time, if you go through all of the words and read the summary beforehand, it makes the listening a lot easier. So now that we've gone through most of these vocabulary words, let's try doing the listening uh, one more time. I'm going to stop recording because there's a copyright issue. Here we go. Um, I'll stop. I'll pause the recording. All right. A, short-term rental platforms are thinking of other ways to create jobs in Barcelona. B, landlords will have several years to start following the new housing rules. Or C, the new rules have already negatively impacted the city or D proponents of Airbnb are fans of the city's new plan. Which one is true? I go for B. Wesley and says it's B. What does everybody else say? B. We got another vote for B. Does this make you feel better, Amaya? You don't have to rent it out, rent your place out to Alejandro right away. You can still squeeze some more money out of it for the next few years. Sorry, Alejandro, you're going to have to wait. You got to find a place to live in the edge of the city and take the commuter rail in. Let's find out. Here we go. The correct answer is yes. Good job. The correct answer is B. All right. We can understand from the final sentence that in Barcelona, A, 68% of homes over the last 10 years were rented rather than bought. B, the amount of council data about homes from the past 10 years has risen. C, 38% of people have bought or sold a house in the last 10 years. Or D, property prices have risen a lot less than rental prices over the past 10 years. B. What is the correct answer? I think it's D. We got one for D. Anybody D. else? Two for D. D. C. One for C. What is it between D and C? Those are usually the tricky ones. Okay, let's try. Anybody else want to guess? The correct answer is D. Good job, whoever chose D. Okay, so there it is. Uh, these are, it was only four questions, but it was really hard because it's an advanced listening question. So um, 
my advice is when I give you one of these more challenging listening questions, first go down to the summary, read the sentence about what it's about, then take your time, look at the vocabulary words and really play with it. You click the word, you look at the definition, you can listen to the pronunciation. Convert. And then you can see how the word is used in context. And then it'll not only help you, it'll be a lot more interesting. You'll get a lot more out of it. Um, that is it. And I think it actually works for this class as well. So I'm not giving you a writing assignment next week. I've graded all the writing assignments that came in today, but I will. Um, I've posted these two assignments, both in gen assignments for Wednesday and Friday. One is about the new Disney movie, In and Out 2, and uh, how well it's doing in the box office. Another is a tech-related uh, story, how OpenAI has made a, quote, cheaper and smaller model for chat GPT. Um, so when you tackle these, I'm using the word tackle in the same context. So for Wednesday, here it is. Wednesday, when you look at it, open it up and think, oh no, he gave me another listening activity. Oh, these are so hard. Why are you doing this to me, George? No, don't do it. Okay, don't panic. First, first thing you do, click right here. Check it out. See, this is a current event, July 29th, 2024. Where is it coming from? Cool. I get free media with my NGen account. No paywall, no nothing. So there's all kinds of audio. There's all kinds of um, articles I can read. So it automatically takes you to a news source that you'd otherwise have to pay for that you're getting for free with your NGen account. It's fantastic. So click at the actual source and then go down to the summary. So what's this story about? This story is right here. Uh, do I have a volunteer to read this? People can wait to see this new movie from Disney and Pixar. Okay, great. So it's entertainment. People can't wait to see the new movie from Disney and Pixar. So can't wait. It means people are really, really excited. Very popular movie. Uh, those of you with kids, you know exactly uh, what this movie is. So, or I should say kids above the age of three know exactly what this movie is. All right. Then once you get the summary of it, you go into the vocabulary. Left click on the vocabulary and it's perfect. Take a look. Achieved. Animated film. Become. Some of them you think you know, but then when you look at it in context, you realize, ah, okay. Earning. Earning a whopping $1.46 billion globally. What is that new, that word whopping? Well, that's also a vocabulary word down here. Whopping, huge or very large. So that's a colloquial vocabulary word right there. Whopping, whopping. And uh, the, the, the uh, machine has an American accent for you. There we go. Animated film. Animated film. So globally. 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 Not an American accent, but hey, you got to mix it up here and there. Make it make it real. Anyway, so when you see these more challenging listening assignments, don't panic. Look at the source. Enjoy those articles. Enjoy the videos. Look at the summary so you get a basic understanding. Then look at the words. And then you really do uh, have a lot more to go with. And you'll enjoy the assignment a lot more. Take your time with it. I recommend... Uh, doing this in 10 minute intervals, for instance, um, once you get your kid to sleep, put your headphones on, uh, practice a few of the words, write them down in your notebook, then listen to the whole story once. If you think you get it, listen to it again, go to sleep, wake up tomorrow, review the words in your notebook, listen to it again, then try your best to, uh, to um, answer the questions and then submit the assignment. So if you, if you do it in short uh, study breaks, 10 to 15 minutes every, uh, 
uh, two or three times a day, I think you're going to get a lot more out of it uh, than just rushing through it all and stumbling around. Because if you do it, try to do it all at once, you'll forget everything. If you break it up throughout your week, you'll get a lot more from this stuff. That is my advice. But of course, you do you, you all, you all have different schedules. Anyway, let's go into a breakout room to wrap up the end of class. Here we go. I'm not even going to ask if anybody wants a break in the middle. I know what you're going to say. Here is the exact same. Oh, two more. Turn this in. Okay. While you do breakout rooms, I think I'll I give feedback with this. Okay. So here was the Joe Gebbia lecture. Here were the questions. First question, number one. This will be breakout room number one. I'm going to put you into rooms right here. Question number one, this is gonna to go to, even though we discussed this last week, I think you'll have a fresh perspective. Elise, Jeff, Paul, Pinar, and Sandy, breakout room one. Gebbia talks about how Airbnb adapted and evolved from an air mattress in his living room to a global phenomenon. What lessons can individuals and organizations learn from Airbnb's journey about innovation and adapting to unexpected challenges. That's question number one, breakout room one. Question number two, community and trust. Gebbia emphasizes the role of trust and community in the success of Airbnb. How important is trust in the sharing economy and what strategies can companies employ to build and maintain trust among users? Uh, in the context of peer-to-peer peer -peer platforms. That question will go to Amaya, Pedro, although Pedro might need to write in the chat, um, Sandy and Inez. Question number three, impact and responsibility. Airbnb has transformed the hospitality industry and changed the way people travel. What are the positive and negative impacts of the sharing economy model exemplified by Airbnb, Airbnb on local communities, economies, and traditional industries? How can companies balance innovation with social responsibility in such disruptive models? And this and uh, the new laws passed in Barcelona are a great example of this coming into fruition. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna open your breakout rooms. Uh, Breakout room one, question one, breakout room two, question two, breakout room three, question three. You can join your breakout rooms now.